Flip machining can definitely seem like dark arts. It's actually not that difficult, and it can add new dimensions to what you make. Understanding where your part is in space is key. Kevin Barnett here in the Carbide 3D Studio. I'll give you all the concepts you need for success, as well as some options for the B-side operation. All the tools you need are next. Let's build your skills. Step one, you have to design something in Create. We're using Create Basic. That is the free version of our software. You don't need fancy software to flip machine. You just need knowledge. For my file, I'm going to take the F1 wheel marker from our coins video. After the design is upsized and the tooling redefined, I add a flip frame to our drawing. This is critical. The frame will be used to locate our B-side cut, and you must center your art in this frame. You must. Do it time and again. Do it as your last step right before you save it. I'm going to create two files, side A and side B. Side A is going to include the flip frame, and that will be entirely cut out. Side B will be utilized for the flip, and we will cut out just our part inside of that frame. One thing of note, when you're cutting around the profile of your part on side A, you want to ignore the tabs. When it comes to cutting the profile of the part on side B, you'll want to utilize those tabs to hold your part in place. Also notice with side B that the lower left corner of your flip frame aligns with the origin. You'll see that in practice in just a moment. Side A has a maximum depth of just past halfway in our stock. With that entire side featured, cutouts, chamfers, plus V-carve ops, we can cut the frame from our stock. Now, here we have some choices. Depending upon the project size, scope, or material, you can locate your stock in a few different ways. Back to the coin video, I created a work holding pocket with a friction fit, and I used a registration mark to align the coin on the flip. Toolpath Zero was the center. I was able to use that friction fit because the end mills and cutting forces were so small. Here, we'll need more strength, but not as much as was needed on the putter project. There, I cut a work holding pocket in MDF for location and used super glue and blue tape to hold the part in the corner of that specially made pocket. Links to both of those videos are located in the description of this one. Each are unique projects, one big, one small. Just part of expanding what you think you're capable of with your machine, definitely go and check them out. Each of those previous options was more of a one-off work holding solution. Here, I wanna create something that's more permanent or semi-permanent on your machine for future use in other projects. I'm going to cut a corner square in place and I'll have the exact details on how to make that square in an upcoming video. For this current video, remember that no matter which work holding process you decide to use, the idea is to locate an XY position that is known. The corner square's origin sits at that XY zero point. With that known position, you can locate the corner of your flip frame accurately to X and Y. If the bed of your machine is flat and you're working with a known thickness material that is consistent all the way across, you won't have to reset your Z. If your material is not super flat, you can recheck your Z for that B side cut. Remember, the goal here is to get you to understand concepts. There are all kinds of variables to any project. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer. Depending on the project size, features, surface area, etc., you'll have to decide what work holding method is appropriate. One of the reasons I like a flip frame is the work holding flexibility that it provides. In this case, it's extremely easy to clamp. Looks like this is secure. Let's run the B side. As you cut, you know you got it right when the cutouts start to match. That's a feeling of satisfaction. Future Kevin jumping in here now. I want you to know that we edit the video down to keep the attention of people who have the attention span of flies. Get the. But we make the same mistakes you do, all right? This is the flip job, the first one that I did in this project video. And yeah, I flipped it along Y and X. That's not going to cut anything out. Mistakes are part of the process. Wasting beautiful walnut is part of the process. Good thing it burns quite nicely. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Again, cutting just past halfway of my stock thickness. I use tabs here to secure our full cutout. You have lots of options for finishing tool paths and strategies if you wanna make sure that your part has a nice clean edge, less post-processing. Make sure you get the basic concept and workflow down, then refine your part finish. That's really all there is to it. Two-sided machining is definitely gonna expand what you're capable of making. And in fact, you can go to multi-sided machining. You can make a set of dice. 
as I did here with a custom pocket as well as clamping locations to produce the multi sides necessary. When you get this process down, you're going to unleash your creativity. You have so many different options once you understand the concept of how to flip and manipulate any object as it relates to your machine. Basic software, creating a flip frame, aligning your art, utilizing basic work holding, and understanding where your part exists in space for the flip, that's how you make your first two-sided part.